Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 759. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 759 to 760, click on the link directly below the video. Hey, this video comes straight from the Mr. Excel message board, Richard Scholar. Awesome poster at the Mr. Excel message board posted this uh, solution. Here's the problem. We have a list with names, and there are duplicates, and it's not sorted, and we want a formula that will list only the unique values and sort it. All right, and we want this to be dynamic. So as we add new names down here, the list will update. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a defined name that will create a dynamic range. So as we add any data down here, our formula will be looking at the defined name and pick up any new names down here. Defined name is just a replacement uh, for a uh, range of cells, and we want a dynamic range of cells. Let's do that first, and then we'll deal with the, the sorting part of it. I'm going to build my formula over here that's going to go into the define name first, and we'll see how it works, and then we'll paste it into the define name dialog box. Now we want a dynamic range, and I'm going to create uh, the range is always going to start right there, and I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it when we paste it up in the define names dialog box. It needs to be absolute. And then I'm going to type a colon. Now, I don't know how to stop that. There's a colon. Every time you type a colon, it's, it assumes you want A2 to A2. I'm going to hit F4 and then uh, go like that. Now, right now, this formula with this colon is expecting a cell reference, but we're going to do a formula after the colon that will look up always the last cell reference. I'm going to use the index function. Now index is great. Uh, it's a lookup function and it can either look up a value or a cell reference. Right? So the array, now you depending on how many you want, you know, you could highlight the whole column if you want or all the way down. I'm just going to highlight down this many. You want to highlight down as far uh, further than you'll ever have names, and then I'm going to hit the F4 key. So for this example, I just did it down to A20. All right, that's the array. We're going to look up the last value here, comma, and now the row number. We want to find the row number of the last item, so I'm going to use match. Match is great. It can find the ordinal position or relative position of an item in the list. And since we want, we have words here, and we want to look up the last possible. Um, Value, I want to put in something to look up for the lookup value, like z, 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 some, the, the last possible word that could ever exist. I'm actually going to use the repeat function. I'm going to say repeat what in quotes z, comma, and then the max uh, characters you can have is 255. I mean, that's kind of overkill. You could just put in quotes z, 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 because there's no word that has z, 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 z. But that'll work. That'll cover all cases. So we're going to look up ZZZ. <coughs> Excuse me. A little sick here. Within that same range right there. Copy and Control V. Close parentheses. The, the, the type we want is this one greater than, but if you leave it out by default, it assumes it's that. So I'm going to close parentheses on that. And then that'll give us our row number. Let's just check it out. Go like this and F9 to evaluate it. Sure enough, 7. That's, it starts out and goes down to 7. Chin is the seventh item in this particular range right here. Control Z, close parentheses. Now let's highlight this and see. Now index, if I highlight and hit F9, it looks up chin because index can look up a value. Control Z. Or since it's now in the context of a colon, which means it should be looking up a cell reference, F9, it'll look up all the items. Control Z. I'm going to enter this with uh, con Enter, and now I'm going to just test it down here. Highlight this and hit the F9. Oh, okay. I can see that the dynamic range is working. Control Z or Escape. I'm going to get rid of that right now. Now I'm going to copy this. Control C, Escape. The keyboard shortcut to open up name manager or define names is control F3 on the formulas ribbon you can get to names control F3 I'm gonna say I already have one that's on the answer sheet right here but I'm gonna create a new one and I'm gonna do something easy just like uh, NN so I can type it quick because I'm gonna have to type it a lot type something short or give it an explicit name like list of names I'm gonna come down here 
there it is. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to immediately test it. This this uh, uh, collapse button, boop. I can see, sure enough, it's looking at the right range. Uncollapse. Click uh, Close. Now I can create um, my formula with that NN, which stands for uh, this defined range. But before we do that, we want to see talk about comparative operators in terms of words. Now we all know comparative operators, there's a 2 and a 3. Equals, is this one less than this one? Well, we know the answer is false because it's looking at, we always think of this as a no, comparative operator from numbers, right? Oh, I'm sorry, it's true because 2 is less than 3, right? But what about for words? Actually, let me leave that there, Control Z. Let's just say equals, hey, is we less than this? Now, what's so cool about a comparative operator for words is it will look at the whole word. You can see WII, WIH. Well, H comes before I, so I is further into the alphabet, so this is true because this word is greater. Oh, I did it wrong again. I'm thinking backwards. This is. Is this less than? The answer is false, because i is further through the alphabet than h. Now let's copy it down one. Of course, it's going to be false here, because we built um, a formula that says less than. These are equal, so of course it's false. Finally, we get down to here, and now we can see i is uh, j is further through the alphabet, so i is less. Now let's do the second letter, right? We're looking at wii, whi. Well, this is false because i is uh, further through the alphabet, h is not as far through the alphabet. Copy it down here. Now we get a true because i is less than j, and finally we can uh, convince ourselves it's still looking at the first letters also. So that's kind of a cool thing to understand that uh, the comparative operators work with uh, words and letters also. All right, now we're going to use that very important idea of uh, s comparing words to words uh, and seeing which ones are less than or greater than, in our case, uh, less than. But first, we're going to uh, build the first part of the formula, which is really a lookup. We somehow have to look up um, the values here, and we're going to use the index function. Well, the array part of index is, hey, what do you, where are all the values? So that's easy. That's our nn, comma. All right, the row number. Now, somehow, we're going to need 4 and then 1 and then 2, right? And then the rest of them, uh, 1, 2, 3. So we're going to need uh, 4 first, 1, 2, and then 3. How in the world? Are we going to get index? You know, usually we use match to, to look up an ordinal position, but these seem to be all mixed up. Well, we are going to use match because match will look up um, the ordinal or relative position of items in a list. And since ultimately we're going to be comparing these and saying uh, which one of these words are less than the other, we want uh, chin as the first one. And let's think about this. Is chin less than any of these other ones? No, there are zero. If we were counting, there's zero items uh, gr less, less than chin, because chin is the first one in a sorted list. So our lookup value is going to be zero with that idea in mind, right? Because there's zero items less than chin, our first one, <coughs> comma. The lookup ray is going to be the tricky part, but we're going to use this idea of comparing uh, words. And we're going to use the count to if. Because remember, just a moment ago, we said, how many are less than chin? There were zero. Well, the range we're going to look up as our NN. The range, that's the range with items that we're going to count, comma. And what's the criteria? Well, we're going to use this less than, and we have to put it in double quotes, um, and then ampersand to NN. Now, what does this do? Criteria, usually we put a single criteria in there. But right now, if I highlight this and hit the F9 key, what does it do? It puts a bunch of criteria in there, right? And so how many, here's that chin, right? How many are less than chin? It'll be 0. A 0 and a 0 will show up when we um, evaluate the entire count if. So let's do that, Control-Z, just to see how this part of it's working.
F9. Sure enough, a 0, a 0, and 2. Why does a 2 show up for Joe and then another 2 right there? So Joe and Joe. Oh, because there's two items less than Joe, and that is exactly chin and chin. For the second one, Joe, how many are less than Joe? 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, well, that this 0 looking up in this array would work but only for the first one. So we're actually going to have to change this array as we copy down. Right now we want that zero, but the next time when it goes down one row, we need this two to turn to a zero. Control Z. Well, how are we going to do that? We're going to subtract the sum of count if. And for the second count if, our range, well, it's going to be that NN again comma, and the criteria is going to be, well, we need an expandable range here. And actually, this expandable range for the criteria is actually going to have to look at whatever previous items index has delivered to the cell. So uh, I'm going to click right here, and then colon, close parentheses, and then I'm going to put my cursor there in F4 to lock it. And I'm going to close parentheses on the sum. Now, this is kind of the hardest part to understand and also to show in this video because it's relying on the results from that this index are delivered. So let's go ahead and <coughs> look at one aspect here and then enter it and go down. And maybe when we evaluate it one row down, we'll understand it better. But let's just think about this. How many un unique sorted lists are in this list right here? Well, there's 0. So let's just highlight this and hit F9. 0, Control-Z. Well, here is that array right here, F9, Control-Z. Well, if we subtract 0 from all these numbers, we're going to get the same exact numbers. But when we go down 1, we're going to need this sum, count if, blah, 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 to evaluate to 2. So when we subtract 2 from all of these, this will be 0. This will be 0, and all the other ones will be some number, whether positive or negative. Now I'm going to Control Z and just show you here, F9, the array will stay the same because this count, the sum and count if has given us a 0 right now, F9. All right, Control Z. When we copy it down one more, it may make a little bit more sense. Now we do have to put uh, exact match because we do have duplicates in our list here. So close parentheses on that, close parentheses. Well, that's going to this this match construction is going to deliver the row number. Close parentheses. This is an array. This count if right here we gave it an array for the criteria. So I'm going to Control Shift and Enter. When you hold Control Shift and tap Enter, you're telling Excel I am putting an array formula in, and those curly brackets get put in automatically. That's Excel telling you, Hey, I just did an array for you. Now I'm going to copy it down. We're going to get some NA. NAs, and we'll deal with that in just a second. But let's go see and evaluate this. The first thing I want to look at is this sum count if, right? Count if. It counted how many of these are in the list? Zero. How many chins are there in this list? Two. So the sum added the zero and the two. So that's how we got a 2. And let's just go ahead and look at this and hit F9. Sure enough, it got a 2, Control Z. And when I evaluate, the count if minus that sum, F9, no way. That's exactly as we hypothesized. 2 minus 2 is 0. And so the match will find that 0, which is related to that Joe. Control Z, escape. Let's just look at it down here, because now this one will more explicitly show that we should get some counts for Chin and Joe here. So the count if, notice the expandable range is now looking through all of these. Well, how many chins and Joes are there? If we just do the count if and not the sum part, it's going to deliver an array. See that? 0, 2, 2. Why? Because there's two Joes and two chins. And then there's 0 of these. Notice that the range is delivering 3 because it's, this is the criteria that's counting through this list. And when you add these together, it's 4. Now I'm going to Control Z. You never want to evaluate two successive times in a row in edit mode because Control-Z doesn't work. F9, there it is, 4, Control-Z. And so when I subtract, let's just go like this, F9, 
there's that 4. So now we're interested in the Joe in this particular row right here. So this 4 minus the 4 from here gives us our 0 there. Let's Control Z and highlight this whole thing right here. F9, and sure enough, now we got a 0. So now, the, the idea that we're changing that original array as we go down to always get zeros is why the lookup value can be 0 there. Control Z, Control Shift Enter. One last thing, we want to get rid of that NA. I'm in Excel 2010. This also works in 2007. If error, I just love this. It's worth it just for this function. So you don't have to repeat this twice. In earlier versions, 2003 and earlier, you had to repeat it twice. I will show you that formula in just a moment. But this is great. You just slap the, um, the, the value there. The value, if that, the, what do you want in the cell if that big formula comes out to be an error? Double quote, close parentheses, Control Shift Enter, double click and send it down. I'm going to copy it all the way down. And we need to test this. Not only the formula, we'll put some duplicates, but um, the dynamic nature of this. By the way, uh, if you come over here, oh, oh, on the answer sheet, I have a formula over here that works in 2003 and earlier. You can see you have to list it. You have to go is NA that for the first part of the if. And then you have to list a blank for true and uh, that index whole thing again. So you actually have to list it twice, and it has to calculate twice. All right, let's test this. This is so exciting. Um, uh, jo John. John. Oh, look at that. Did it sort it perfectly? And it picked up the expandable range. Joe John. That is just amazing. Man, is it cool hanging out at the Mr. Excel message board. You can go uh, read the post there. All right, see you next trick.